Hi, I'm EVM. Welcome back. Now, can you buy a full electric vehicle that does the same range as it did when it was new, fully capable, all that, the battery's okay, for less than 5,000 of your English pounds? That's the challenge I've been given by someone on the uh, anti-EV side, shall we say. Now, just to put this challenge, this difficulty, into some perspective, less than 5,000 pounds in full electric world is essentially bottom of the barrel. That's the cheapest they get between four and five grand. And I've just had a look on Auto Trader. There are currently 445,000 cars listed on Auto Trader. In terms of how many full electric cars are out there that are under 5,000 pounds, there are 44. 44 of, not far off, half a million cars. So the choice is very small. And that's before we even factor in finding ones that haven't been written off and repaired, that haven't been abused and have got a knackered battery. These are cars that are probably, what, eight, nine, ten years old? And I'm trying to find one that's got original range, still works fine, just as it did out of the box when it was brand new. This isn't going to be easy, but it is something that I'm sure I can do. You just need patience, willingness to travel, and, um, well, a lot of luck. This is the first of a few videos, a mini series if you will, so please do subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I will be doing a couple of other sort of behind the scenes looks about this search in the new second channel. It's not a different channel, it's essentially just like behind the scenes version of this extra content. That's called Driving Home. The link will be in the description below. Now, you're probably thinking four or five grand is still a generous budget. But as I said, that is pretty much the cheapest EVs you're gonna find. There's about six below 4,000 pounds. You can't compare a full electric vehicle just yet on the used market in terms of price. 1,000, 2,000 pounds, I can get a petrol diesel car pretty easily that fits this bill. But as EVs only came out 10, 11 years ago, in the UK anyway, and there were only two, three, four options at best, it's a minute market, as I said. So this isn't mature enough to say, I can get this in petrol diesel land. That's a different tale entirely. I'm not trying to compare them. I'm just trying to see if we can buy a completely usable electric vehicle compared to when it was new for less than five grand. So anyway, I think we have to start by obviously looking to see what's out there. Now, there are a couple of constraints I'm gonna restrict myself to. One, auto trader only. And I'm very conscious of trying to make sure that everything I do is something that could be easily recreated. I'm not a trader, I don't have access to auctions. This is gonna be all private sale stuff that people are already familiar with and anyone can do. So if I can do this, you can do this. At least that's the idea. So we've got 445,000 cars. And if I just go down here, change the fuel type to electric. Come on. And then if I change the price to a maximum of, I'll put 6,000 pounds because sometimes you can get a good offer. Um, but my absolute price as I said, is five. That's what the most I can spend. I want to spend less. I think this is easily doable for less or at least doable, maybe not easily. Now, I think it's fair to say that I've only realistically got two options here, the Nissan Leaf or the Renault Zoe, because that's essentially all that's available beneath five grand. Now, my first EV back in 2015, which is scarily eight and a bit years ago, um, was a Nissan Leaf. That was replaced with another Nissan Leaf. So for the first five and a bit, five and a half years of EV ownership, I had a Leaf. For that reason alone, I don't really want another one. I want to try something else in terms of owning one. 105 of those and 35 Renaults. Okay, 4,280 for the cheapest. That's a 65 Ridge battery lease, 44. Let me get back to you. Now I have one thing that is definitely my favor. I'm in no rush. I'm not really picky about the car. I've already narrowed it down to the Zoe, but other than that, it can be any Zoe. I don't mind what color it is, what spec it is. So I've got a broad range to choose from, well, relatively speaking. Um, but again, I can be patient. I don't need to replace the car because mine's going soon or anything, which means I can keep an eye on cars. I've 
favorited four of them so far. And that's when you can sometimes get a decent deal, which is why I'm looking at anything up to six grand because you never know, someone might take an offer that's lower than five. Now there is a little trick, which I never knew about until relatively recently. And I don't know why, because it's really obvious when you look at it. But if you're an auto trader, you can find out exactly when the, ad the advert went up. Even if it's been edited and changed, you can see when the original ad went live. So let me pick something random, this Renault Zoe. Look in the top left hand corner, I'll put a screenshot of it. But right up here, where the URL is, that tells you when the car was uh, originally put up in terms of the advert. Up there is the date. It's just in reverse order, 2023 04 30. So that means that this Zoe at five and a half grand, it's a 2014 one, first went up on the 30th of April. It is now near the end of June. So they're either not in a rush or they're going to get desperate to get rid of the damn thing because they've been up for sale for so long and it's not sold. Now, it might not sold for a good reason, which is why you need to be careful. I don't need to read into it. But you get my point. The longer it's been up, the bigger the chance of a decent deal. And I never knew you could do that with AutoTrader. Seems kind of obvious really now. Another little tip, if you go to totalcarcheck.co.uk, there's no ad, uh, sponsoring on this, I should point out. Put the registration in, so this is the same Zoe. Scroll down, previously seen adverts. Renault Zoe, it went up 30th of April, and that originally says it was up at six and a half thousand pounds. What was it on AutoTrader again, if we go back? Five and a half. So it's already dropped a thousand pounds, but it still hasn't sold. Given the hammer in the used market, especially for electric vehicles, has had recently, a lot of people are like, but it's worth more than this. And it just isn't. It's worth what it's worth. That might be doable to get for below five grand because it's clearly overpriced. So I'm going to use these things, these little uh, nuggets I've got. And sometimes you just have to be bold. Contact someone and go, look, I know it's been up quite a while. I'm going to give you an offer and I'll probably have to buy this over the phone if they're not that close. This one is Great Yarmouth. Um, so it's a bit of a gamble. But here's the offer. Like, yeah. You know, Four and a half grand, something like that. They'll probably say no, but they might go, oh, you know, I just need to get rid of it. Meet me at four, four nine, something like that. And all of a sudden you've got a good deal. Sometimes you've just got to lowball them and you never know it can work. Right, I'm going to have some tea now and I'll probably see you in a week, two or three or whenever I see something or anything changes or I've you know, maybe put a bid on a car or something. Okay. okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Well, that was a bust. The person I'm going to ring now, essentially, this is the last time because I have rung them, well, several times over the last several days. Late morning, early afternoon, evening. Uh, Sunday, Monday, and now we're on Tuesday. They've not answered. I mean, the car's been up for six weeks, and I think I know why. So let me try them again. See, this car's been uh, up for sale for about six weeks, according to Auto Trader. And I think I know why. Because they don't pick up the damn phone. Why would you do that? You've got your car up for sale. Oh no, I'm not going to answer me. They'll have missed calls galore. If it's sold, take it the advert off. I mean, I've sent them a message three days ago through Auto Trader as well. Nothing. God, I tell you, if you're selling a Zoe, battery owned Zoe in Harrogate, I think I know why you didn't sell. Right, well, whilst I'm setting this up for another video, I'll just give you an update. It's been a few weeks. I've spoken to a couple of people that it just you know, it didn't sound right. I wasn't too happy with their responses in terms of for what I'm after anyway. Um, but I have found one car, which I think will fit the bill. The advert's a bit, uh, what's he mean by that? Which is why sometimes you need to ring people up and say, what did he mean by this? And sometimes it is what you think it is, it's like, oh, well, that is fine, I'll leave it. And sometimes it's a case of, oh, well, no, I didn't mean to, to say it like that. I meant this is what's happened to the car in the past or, or whatever we're talking about. So ultimately, it's better than you think. Not everyone's good at doing adverts. It's sometimes just a, a change of wording can make all the difference. So if that's the case, other people will be put off and will assume something that's not ultimately true. And then you can take advantage of that because... They're not getting people looking at their car for false reasons, which means 
you've got a better chance of getting a, a, a cheaper price, essentially. So I'm, uh, I'm going to ring him up and see what happens. Right, let's give this guy a bell, see if we can get a bargain. Um, have you got time now, or is it a good time? Cool. All right, um, basically I'd just like to make an offer. I'm happy to transfer a deposit or something like that, or PayPal. I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to know as soon as possible, because I have to book the train and arrange childcare as well on the Saturday. Um, so if you could let us know as soon as possible, like, you know. Well, yes, um, come back to me either way, and then uh, I'll uh, basically come down, have a cursory look over it, and... Uh, and then just drive it back, I suppose. He's accepted, but he said he's got another person who was off making an offering, and now uh, he's going to go back to him. Uh, I guess he's going to ring him up and say, oh, I've had this offer, do you want it or not? Can you beat the offer? Players against each other, I guess, which I can't really argue against. It's That's the game you play, isn't it, when you're buying and selling cars. So, um, yeah, let's see what happens, because I do need to know as soon as possible. Because it's a long way off. There's nothing wrong with having to travel to get the car you want. People who only search within a 50 mile radius, I think, are, are, are insane. <laughs> 245 miles in a Zoe that doesn't rapid, rapid charge. But what a range test. If I do end up buying it anyway. Um, if not, then I guess the search continues. Right, um, Saturday morning. I got the train down yesterday uh, to South Wales. Here I am. They're going to pick me up after I've had some breakfast in about an hour. It's six something or another at the moment. Um, like I say, you have to travel to get what you want. I'm not going to ask them to be on YouTube or all like that. I thought I'll just... That, that, that's a private thing for them. I don't, I don't, it's a bit weird to ask. Um, so, yeah, I think, in theory, unless I find something very wrong with the car before I go and actually transfer the money, um, the next time you should see me would be with the car, I guess. The deed is done. It is mine. The purchase is made. I've retaxed it, got the insurance, paid the guy. Uh, I've driven a few miles down the road. I didn't want to do this in their driveway for obvious reasons. Um, so yeah, I'm now South Wales, right on the coast. It's a very, very nice place, very windy place right now. Um, and I've got a 250-ish mile journey ahead of me in a car that doesn't rapid charge, uh, in DC rapid charge, and does apparently 85 miles in the real world according to EV database. So this is the ultimate range test. Can I get 85 miles out of this under normal driving? Because obviously right now the weather's okay, it's not winter, but that's what the average means, isn't it? You get less in winter, more in summer, so... Let's uh, let's see what happens. Oh, I found a problem. I found an issue. My water bottle does not fit in this cup holder. It fits in the one further back, but that's further back. I have to stretch for that one. Maybe I should take the cab back. It's finally home. A 22 kilowatt hour Zoe. So let me tell you the brief headline sort of statistics. It's a January 2016 Zoe. So it's newer than I expected to get. I thought it'd be nine, 10 years old, seven and a half. So it's a 2016 Renault Zoe Dynamic Nav. If anybody can tell me in the comment section how the trim levels work in the Renault Zoe world, that, that'd be handy. Um, I'm the third owner. So the guy I bought it off had had it for four years. The person before him had had it for three in a bit, I guess. And it's done less than 35,000 miles over its seven and a half years. So it's barely running. And weirdly, which is something I did not expect, it's under full warranty with Renault. I'm talking the whole car, not a battery lease thing. The whole car is under warranty because he's extended the warranty each year after the initial three. Um, I think it's four or 500 quid a year, something like that. Uh, so until April, 2024, the whole thing is under warranty, which, I, 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 again, I didn't even know that was a thing. So, how much do you think this 2016 Zoe with 36,000 miles has cost the dynamic nav? Well, you already know that I had the sub 5,000 pound target, so did I make it? Yes, I did. Feel free to pause the video right now and put in the comments what you think without cheating. This whole car cost me 4,400 pounds. 
<laughs> it's under warranty. It's seven and a half years old. 4,400 of my English pounds and it's done 36,000 miles. Now you're probably thinking, hang on a minute, what about the 50, 60 pounds a month for the battery lease? It is entirely battery owned. No battery lease on this at all. It's all mine for £4,400. Now, of course, the original premise of the video was, can I find an EV below five grand that does the same range as it did when it was new? And with this being a battery owned instead of battery leased, obviously I don't have that safety net which the battery lease gives you, which is ultimately what I think many people would look for, especially in a nine, 10 year old car. Well, yesterday, of course, I did what turned out to be 260 miles to get back here, which is the ultimate range test. I've done several uh, charge stops and I know exactly what state of health the battery is in. And I think the full walk around externally, the full internal look around, uh, there's a few things I need to tell you about the air conditioning and the motor as well that was in the advert. Um, so I think all that and the range test I'm going to tell you about in the next video because this as I said is a mini series of videos so in the next video which I'll probably put up in a couple of weeks or if you're a member you'll get to see it next Sunday because members get it earlier um, then well you're gonna to have to wait for that I'm afraid sorry but that's YouTube for you there's also now a second channel you may have noticed earlier that's just launched called driving home that's where the podcast sits and lives but I will be doing a little bit of a uh, kind of behind the scenes sort of stuff. It's the second channel to this. It's called Driving Home, links in the description below. And I might even do a few sneaky peeky views of this before the, the video in a couple of weeks, if you're a non-member at least. It's getting very confusing. Either way, please do like, subscribe, all the usual YouTube gumph. Yes, you can buy a full electric car for under 5,000 pounds. But does it do the range it did? when it was new.